All right. Checking one, two, three. Is this thing on? Welcome to the Spectra Layers Pro Advanced Audio Spectrum Editor Hangout. Today's Wednesday, June 17th, and we are online. This, um, this broadcast will begin in about 15 minutes. And um, we are live now. Let's see who's checking in. We can wait a minute and see. Hey, all right. Audio is working. <laughs> Lloyd, thanks. I really need to know that. This is my first ever hangout, so I'm a little bit uh, nervous. Please be kind. Greetings from Helsinki. Thank you. PC, thank you. Good. My name is Mike Scheibinger, and uh, I'm really pleased to be here. Um, the audio is working. I'm waiting for the video to, uh, to come in. Hello, Chicago, South Africa. Hey, Scotty. How's it going? Good to hear from you. You guys, um, all interested in spectral layers, I take it. I sure hope so. And I hope that you're all beginners because this is definitely the, um, the basics. We are going to be working on the basics. DV Toolbox. Hello, Calgary. This is so cool. People checking in from all over the world. I love it. It's great. Yes, indeed. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, I can see my Spectra Layer screen. Oh, we have to turn the volume down on my monitor computer here. There we go. Very interested, Scotty. That's really great because um, Spectral Layers is very, very cool. I have been working with Spectral Layers for a really long time, and I love the program. And um, it's it's just really great for me to have an opportunity to show you guys how to do this because it's so much fun. Hans in Cape Town. This is so cool. People from all over the world. It's so cool. I hope you guys are all safe out there. Um, I'm here in Madison, Wisconsin, and um, I'm still kind of um, sheltering in place and, um, you know, doing the best I can to keep myself and others um, safe. And um, so, uh, yeah, onward, onward through the, uh, the modern times that we're living in. And, uh, I just hope everyone's nice and safe and happy. Good. IDB. I am, am a beginner and I use hardware. Mm -hmm. Eager to learn Cubase. Yeah, for sure. Spectra layers and Cubase um, work really super well together. Yep. Like Photoshop layers for audio. That's what people say. It's um, It looks a little bit like a Photoshop and it acts a little bit like that, like a layered um, video program. You can hear, or you can see on the interface here. Um, yeah, it's got, you know, you, you have your tools over here on the left, and you, you have your layers over here on the right, and um, the picture's in the middle, as we shall soon discover. Poolsville. What country is Poolsville in? Please tell me. Sounds like, um, is that UK? Yeah. Good. Spain. Carlos from Spain. This is great. So good to see you all here today. Hope you're having a good day. And, um, hey, Scotty. Yep. We're going to start in, uh, I don't know, it looks like about 15 minutes. So we can just hang around and talk and uh, make sure that um, make sure that everything's working you know <laughs> this is my first ever hangout um, I tried doing a hangout from my home location last month and um, I discovered that I didn't have enough bandwidth to do the job I kept buffering and um, it was 
highly annoying. I'm telling you, it was no fun at all. So, um, and I have a really nice recording studio. You know, it's a home studio. It's a basement studio. But the problem is I don't have a cable out there. I have a satellite connection or a tower connection. And so it just doesn't have quite enough punch to do um, a steady streaming, uploading stream. And so... I had to find an alternate location to do my stream from, and I'm here in Madison, Wisconsin, at a place called Arts for All. Arts for All is a place that I occasionally work for. I'm a teacher, and I teach people with disabilities. Um, I teach them music, how to enjoy music, listen to music, and we, you know, we play instruments, and and it's called Arts for All. And um, Arts for All was kind enough to let me use this space to broadcast from today. So today I'm in the city in Madison, Wisconsin, in the United States, and I'm at Arts for All, and I'm broadcasting from here, and everything seems to be going well. This is my very first ever Hangout, so I'm just kind of getting used to it and, you know, trying to keep my computer, um, you know, connected and get the sound right and get the levels right and stuff. So, um, yeah. Austria is in the house. Hello. Poolsville, Maryland. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Maryland. Okay. Got it. While we wait, what would you all say is your favorite Cubase instrument? Um, I'm liking that pad shop. I think that's... Uh, this, the last time I, I checked out the sounds in, in Pad Shop, it was giving up some really great sounds. And um, I enjoy that a lot. And I think that um, Pad Shop just went through some big improvements, um, nice updates and, and uh, stuff. So, um, yeah. Thank you, Pessy. I'm doing great. Yeah, I'm kind of I feel pretty comfortable about this. This is this is nice. All my my technology is working. One of the interesting things here is that I am running spectral layers from the same laptop that I'm broadcasting from. And so, you know, that puts a little bit of strain on the laptop. And so spectral layers looks just maybe just a little bit jittery because it's running over the top of all of the um, the OBL and the sound flowers and all the different, you know, connectivity things that are running in the background. And so um, spectral layers in the context of this, in a, in a broadcast, it doesn't quite look as smooth and as sharp um, um, it doesn't have that 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 kind of really solid feel that you get if um, if all of that stuff in the background were closed, and so. But it's okay though. You know, Spectra Layers is not a super CPU intensive program. Of course, it helps to have processing power. But let's take a look at uh, my system. What am I running? So um, we got High Sierra here and. Um, on an i7, three three gigahertz Intel Core i7. This is plenty fast enough to run Spectral Layers Pro or Cubase or pretty much pretty much any program. Um, good performance, and um, eight gig of RAM. You know, this is a standard issue laptop. Nothing nothing really souped up or you know spectacular. It works. Does a good job. Yeah, VST. VST instrument. Yeah, I've, I'm just starting to get used to the Steinberg uh, family of um, VST instruments. Um, several months ago, um, I started loading up all the instruments, um, all of the Steinberg instruments on my system. And um, I haven't played with them all yet, but I can tell you one thing. There's, there's a lot of them. A lot, there's a lot of instruments to be had and um, the the load, the content load is is large and so you have to have a lot of hard drive space to store all that stuff. And um, this Steinberg has a really nice interface for downloading these applications, these instruments. 
and all the different, you know, accoutrements that go along with the um, the Steinberg ecosystem. They have a nice, uh, you know, downloading interface so that you can make sure that you have it all and, you know, you've got all the bits and you get it all installed. But, yeah, I mean, if you have all of the Steinberg instruments on your machine, that's a lot of stuff and, and um, a lot of ways to be creative and, and get busy. I'm going to be creating more um, Spectral Layers demos in the future. And, of course, you know, since Spectral Layers is designed to be part of the Steinberg ecosystem, um, you can expect that, you know, I will be bouncing all over, you know, the programs from WaveLab to Cubase to um, back to Spectral Layers again. And, you know, it's all part of the big ecosystem. And, you know, that's where those instruments come in because you can, you know, create music on an, an instrument in, um, you know, um, Cubase or Nuendo and then, you know, render it out, transfer those files into spectral layers for processing. It all becomes just, you know, one big party. And I'm going to have a, a little drink of water here. All right. So we're going to start in about, um, looks like four minutes. Retrolog synth, yeah. IDB likes the Retrolog synth. Yep, that's good. It's good. Halion is good. Um, moving from contact to Halion, sure, why not? But hey, you know, why not both? Uh, contact is great stuff. Halion is great. The layering options are vast. Yes, indeed. In in both Halion and contact, I mean, you just have um, a lot of customizability. Um, and a, a lot of opportunity to build to build custom sample banks. Now, with that in mind, um, the place where you make the samples to load into your Halion or into your contact, the place where you make those samples, Spectral Layers Pro. You would want to use this program for designing the samples that you load into your contact or Halion. And um, to give you an example of what I'm talking about, when you get a chance, go and look at a demo that I created, and it's called Electric Guitar Production in Spectral Layers Elements, Part 1 and 2. So in Electric Guitar Production in Spectral Layers Elements, Part 2, um, I show you at the end a way to split um, a guitar riff into like 20 more than 20 different layers and all of those layers can be exported and you know once you have a folder full of those exported sounds why you can just transfer them over to your Halion um, and build your custom sound set over there to be triggered via um, MIDI or you know on your DAW or on your MIDI keyboard or whatever but the, the point being is that Spectral Layers Pro is the place where you would want to create your samples. It's a, it's a place to produce samples later on then for transferring over to your, uh, your sampler. Hello, Helio from Paris. I wish I was in Paris right now. That sounds like a nice place to be. Yes, indeed. Oh, IDB wishes he was um, still on Sierra. So you took the Catalina bait uh, a little bit too soon, perhaps. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I, I'm one of these people who um, I don't really like to upgrade to a new OS unless I'm absolutely forced to do it. When I'm forced to, then yeah, then I will. But, you know, if everything's working and... Um, I'm happy, and um, I don't have any compatibility issues, then I'm going to be the last person to want to upgrade my OS. I don't know, you know, call it lazy, I guess, or maybe frightened, <laughs> whatever, you know. Either way, not upgrading today, so I'm perfectly happy with my High Sierra Spectral Layers Pro 6. Works great on it. Okay, here we go. Now it is time to um, begin. It's uh, 12 o'clock. 
and uh, welcome to this YouTube Hangout. This is my first ever YouTube Hangout. I've never done this before, so I'm trying to get with modern times here and get going on the YouTube Hangouts because um, in this day and age, they're becoming very popular. This is the way we communicate now a lot more with um, online tools such as this. And I'm really glad to be here today. My name is Mike Scheibinger, and I am in Madison, Wisconsin, in the United States. And um, I'm not at home right now. I'm not in my home studio. I'm at a place called Arts for All in the city of Madison. And Arts for All has been very kind, and they have um, let me use their office complex for a broadcast space today because, unfortunately, I don't have the bandwidth at home. So here I am. I'm at Arts for All, and um, I'm giving a shout-out to Arts for All um, because they're kind enough to give me this space. And the mission of Arts for All is to expand the capabilities, confidence, and quality of life for children and adults with disabilities by providing programs in dance, drama, creative writing, music, and visual art. And um, I'm a music teacher for Arts for All, and um, I teach people with disabilities how to create music and enjoy music, and we have a lot of fun. And so when I'm not working on Spectra Layers and Steinberg products, I'm doing that, and um, it's great stuff. Hey, Bruno from France, good to see you. Okay, here we are in Spectra Layers Pro 6. And uh, when you open up Spectra Layers Pro 6, this is what you see, an empty space. Don't be intimidated. It's, um, it's an empty space that will be filled up with goodness very, very quickly. And um, just like any audio editor, we want to get a sound on board to edit. And so this is what happens. I'll go to File open and I'm going to open this file called big room now what's happening here is that I'm opening a wave file and I open a wave file into the editor the wave file opens in the editor and you can see it in the spectral graph you can see it's a stereo file up here we have uh, a waveform display here we have the waveform display for the other channel. And as you can see here in the layers panel, bigroom.wave has entered the Spectra Layers Pro 6 environment as a wave file. Now, what do we call this thing? You could call it a channel, but in Spectra Layers Pro 6, we call it a layer. So when I go file, open and I open a WAV file. The WAV file comes up here on a project tab. See it says bigroom.wav. This is my project tab. If I close it, it goes away. I can open recent, go back to big room. The WAV file loads, comes up over here on the layers panel. And the layers panel has controls on it, mute, solo, phase, and volume control. And um, those are pretty self-explanatory. It's not that complicated. Um, it's, you know, you might say that it's kind of DAW-like, but it's not a DAW. This is not a channel. It's a layer. And so here we are in Spectra Layers Pro 6, and we are faced with our drum file. And it's called Big Room, and this is a drum loop that was played by uh, drummer Steve Ferroni. Now, give me a shout if you've heard of Steve Ferroni. He is one of the most uh, heard drummers in the world. He's played on hundreds of hits, hits by many, many different people. Um, the last band he was in was Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, and he's played with literally everybody. Um, I'm a little bit older. Back in the 70s, I used to listen to, like, fusion music a lot. And Steve Ferroni was in this band called Brian Auger's Oblivion Express, which was a great band. And um, he played so well with that band. But Steve Ferroni recorded a sample, a drum sample library called Drums from the Big Room at O. Henry Studios in Burbank, California. And I was there for that. It was a lot of fun recording this. But that's enough talk. Let's listen. This is what the drum loop sounds like. Now, if I hit my space bar, you're going to hear it. Space bar, boom. OK, 
okay. All right. So I played through the loop two times. Down here in the transport control, I have uh, my loop control. So if I have the loop control on, it loops the sound. This is just a great drum loop, and it's perfect for demonstrating in spectral layers because it has such a full frequency. Um, it has a really, really solid kick. And so let's look at the kick drum. Um, people always ask me in spectral layers, how do I match what I hear with what I see? How do I match what I hear with what I see? If I hear a sound how can I point to that sound in the spectrum and make sure that um, I've got a good match? And so the, the idea here is matching um, a visual component with um, a spectral component. And um, it's really pretty easy, and you get better at it the more you work at it. It doesn't take long to get used to. But let's explore... Um, one kick drum sound. So I'm going to click here in the timeline, and what happens is my playhead, um, or, you know, my playhead locks or it snaps to where I click. And so I'm going to assume that this area here, this colored, this brightly green colored area, that's a kick drum. Okay, that's one kick drum. So if I hit the space bar, I can hear it. If I hit the space bar again, it stops playback. The playhead snaps back, and there it is. Okay, now we can see it, and we can see that uh, it's green. But I can change that, because here in the Layers panel, I have an assortment of colors to choose from that I can color uh, my material. And uh, it's nice now, you know, you have a favorite color. I like this orange color. But this color scheme gets very, very important later when you start piling up layers. And uh, you can differentiate the layers by color. Um, up here we have another option for um, coloring, which gives you kind of a more like a dynamic uh, display of color. And uh, we'll stick with this one for now. Now... In spectral layers, amplitude, loudness, is a function of brightness. So the brighter the sound, the louder it is. And this kick drum is really bright. So let's take a look at the kick drum and see how close we can get to it. And um, first of all, I want to show you this waveform display. So spectral layers can have a waveform display. Okay. And of course, you know, this is what you see in, in your DAW or in your, your typical audio editor. And, um, you know, the waveform display in spectral layers, sure, it's going to be handy for certain things like finding out, you know, exactly where a peak is or where the, the loudest peak is in a file. It's easy to look at and see. Like, as you can see, this is the kick drum we're looking at, and here's the peak, you know, right in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this wave file all the way up until it locks at the top of the interface. Now I see only the spectrum, and this is the kick drum. Now, let's get closer to this kick drum. Now, on the horizontal axis, we have time. And you can see over here on the left, that's the beginning of the file. Over here on the right, this is the end of the file. If I place my cursor over the kick drum and I move my scroll wheel, I'm clicking it by increments, it focuses in on a shorter and shorter time range. And up here, you can see this bar. I can move this bar and go through the time range at this uh, zoom factor. So, you know, here's the beginning of the file. Here's my cursor. And that's how we do it. So, here I am 
moving um, this this window and I'm getting closer and closer to the kick drum and now in I use I use Macintosh computers I use iMacs and I use MacBook Pros now I use the thinking mouse on most most things that I do if I'm working in a DAW I will use a thinking mouse if I'm working in something like um, an NLE you know for sure I will use the thinking mouse because I like horizontal scroll and um, I like the you know the momentum and inertia that you can get by flicking the uh, the thinking mouse you know up and down and from side to side but when I use spectral layers, especially if I'm going to be inside of the program for a while and being, you know, intensive with it, I like to go back and use an old-fashioned uh, wheel mouse with no horizontal scrolling that has a detent uh, scroll. So that way, see, you can hear it clicking away. It sounds like this. Click, click. So I'm clicking uh, my scroll wheel, and it's kind of ratcheting you know the file and um it, it never spins out of control and i don't know it's a small thing but um i just thought i'd mention it of course you know we have the time we're taking it easy this is the basics and uh i have just found that using a scroll wheel uh, an old style scroll wheel mouse gives me the kind of control that i like in spectral layers so again moving the scroll wheel moves the horizontal axis but what about the frequency axis? That's displayed over here on the right. And you can see my frequency scale here. This is 200 hertz, 500 hertz, 1K hertz, 2K hertz, 3 and up, and so on. If I hover my mouse over the frequency that I want to explore and I do the scroll wheel thing, then it builds up... Uh, vertically and I get closer and closer to uh, the frequency range that that I want to see and um, now watch if I go up here to 3k and hover over 3k and move my scroll wheel the 3k expands and everything below it kind of like goes down under the under the border so you can't see it and so that's one way to um, locate the 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 part of the spectrum that you want to operate on now if i want to locate if i want to work on this kick drum look if i want to work on this kick drum and i put i put my uh, cursor over 200 hertz some of that kick drum look some of that's getting lost underneath uh, the border and so okay and so if i want to see that stuff i can take my hand tool and just pull everything up so that now I can see the entire uh, I can see the entire spectrum from zero Hertz all the way up to um, the top of wherever I'm at your 1.4 but again if if um, if I click on this again and expand it then I lose I lose the bottom but now we have a way to um, solve this problem if we're working in a sound file and we always want to see zero hertz, we want to see the bottom of the frequency spectrum, all I have to do is go up here to View, Frequency Unit, and then I go down here to Lock Spectrogram to Zero Hertz. Okay, now with this selected, watch. Now when I scroll over the frequency, the, the kick drum stays anchored at the very bottom and um, I never lose sight of it and uh, so let's hear it there it is there's our kick now if I want even better focus on the kick drum I go up here on the upper right hand side of the interface and I go to the display part of the uh, of the GUI. Now, here I have a thing called composite view. I have uh, minimum amplitude, maximum amplitude, FFT size, resolution, and refinement. These controls are all visual controls. They 
they control and they shape what I see, not what I hear. And it's really important to know, one of the most important things here to know is that this, these controls in the display panel, these have absolutely zero effect on the sound. They do not affect the sound. They only affect what you see there. Like your focusing controls and your aperture controls on the camera, it would be, that would be the equivalent. And so without going into too deep of an explanation of, of what these things do, these, uh, these min-max controls here, these are threshold controls. And if you move them around, it gives you a different idea of, of max amplitudes and um, the distribution of amplitude inside of your uh, inside of your audio content. And so if I move this here around a little bit like so, you can see that now um, the loudest parts of this kick drum are very, very clearly displayed. Um, resolution provides a little bit more focus and the refinement control is interesting. Refinement really kind of um, drills down on, on the, the focus um, until you can, you can see things sort of like in extreme focus. Now, the refinement control uses a little bit of CPU, but um, it's nice to look at. Um, it it kind of helps keep things sorted out. And I like having a little bit of refinement. Um, and it doesn't slow down the computer that much, but yeah, this is, you know, um, I guess you could say that you're using quite a bit of GPU when, uh, when you, uh, you have the refinement control set this high. Now again, let's listen to the kick drum. Boom, and there it is. There it is. Now, let's go back and make our file. 100% uh, viewable again from beginning to end and this time watch the playhead go by and see if you can identify all the kicks and snares. Kick, kick. See that's not so hard. Once you get everything focused up right you can say oh this must be a snare. Sure, that's a snare. And uh, how about here? Is this a snare? Whoops. We're just going to pull that back up there. Yeah, there's a snare. There we go. So, the way I have everything set up right now, um, especially, you know, regarding my display panel controls, it's really easy to see the objects in the spectral graph and it's good because you know like I said everybody is concerned about being able to see objects in the spectral graph they're wondering if they can you know sort of cognitively put it together and um, I'm here to tell you that um, it doesn't take long to really get the hang of this um, just open up a sound file in spectral layers start working with the display controls, focusing, moving your playhead around to different places and hitting play, and pretty soon everything will fall into place and you'll be able to determine um, any sound in the spectrum based on amplitude, frequency, and um, the different windows of, um, of zoom and frequency zoom. You know, it's, it's really... Um, it's not that difficult and the whole time it's fun because um, you know it's really fun looking at the spectrum and seeing um, all the stuff that's going on in there okay well hey again you know thanks for checking into this hangout and um, I want to collect a little feedback here on uh, what is your best day to do um, to do hangouts what is your your best day in time and think a little bit about the kinds of topics that you would like to see addressed and always um, um, log in with your feature requests and we we'll go back and read all the comments later and uh, sooner or later we'll have um, the best days and times for doing these hangouts and um, a big pile of uh, feature requests for our programmer 
Mr. Robin LaBelle in Paris um, to work on as he's developing improvements for Spectra Layers Pro. And um, the next upgrade of Spectra Layers Pro is on the horizon, so stay tuned for that. Okay, let's listen to this drum loop one more time, get our bearings back here. Yeah, you know, the best way to learn Spectra Layers Pro is by watching demonstrations just like this one um, because um, it's a very visual program and it's a little bit esoteric, so you really want to um, have it demonstrated to you like this. And like I said, we're taking it nice and easy today. So let's take a little bit of a look at um, some of the tools in Spectra Layers Pro 6. Up here on the upper left, I'm going um, select. I'm going to select a tool for frequency selection. This is the frequency selection tool. So, again, I hover over the tool, select the one I want. I want frequency. Release the mouse, and then here we are. My uh, cursor has turned into sort of a horizontal line. Now watch, this is the magic right here. I am going to hold down the left mouse button and drag down across the spectrum from 300 hertz all the way down to zero hertz. Now, look at that. I've just made a selection in Spectral Layers Pro 6. Again, hover the cursor over the, the top frequency pull down, release, boom, I have a frequency. I'll bet you're asking, uh, what does this sound like? That's what you're wondering, right? Let's listen. So, by hitting the space bar, I can play the selection. All right. There we go. Now, that's what this sound file sounds like from zero hertz all the way up to 300 hertz. If I want to select something else, I can just go right ahead and select something else. I'll select from 300 to 700. There we go. Kind of a lower mid-range. And again, I'll make another selection of higher frequencies yet. This is from 700 to about 1.3k. There we go. Pretty solid mid-range there. And then finally we'll go from uh, 1.3K up to 3K. And this is where you're going to start getting, you know, that uh, high-end sparkle. There we go. Okay. Indeed. Um, yes, now, uh, Dikas has a question. Is there an option to set a crossfade time when looping samples? And the answer to that is yes. Um, and I can do that right in the context of this file. So, let's make a selection. Okay. So the selection is outlined with a white border all the way around the selection. And then you can see that the shading inside the selection is uniform all the way from the middle out to the edge. And so the frequency in the selection is going to be captured at full amplitude all the way from uh, end to end. But now watch this, and um, Dikas, this is for you. I can set my frequency fade here to a number of hertz. So watch. Now, if I set a 326 hertz fade and I pull a selection, look, see the difference? This is feathered out over here and over here, top and bottom. Now, in the middle, I'm going to get full amplitude, but then 
it feathers out. And so here we're feathering out at 326 hertz. Let's make that a little bit tighter. So here we have an 87 hertz fade. And you can see, look, on the edges of the frequency, um, it's kind of feathered back. Yeah. So Dikas, yeah, and uh, very quickly, I'm going to show you something else. As long as we're on the, as long as we're on the subject of fades, and so a way to demonstrate fades so that you can really hear them is to go to um, time selection. Now this is time selection, and instead of pulling a frequency selection across the entire file, here I'm pulling um, a time selection. Okay, so this time selection with um, a zero fade or a, a zero, zero seconds of fade is going to be kind of like an abrupt transition. Okay, listen. Okay. It just snaps back and when it hits the beginning of the selection, you know, it, it comes on at full force, full amplitude. But now, Dico, watch this. If I set a time fade of, let's say, um, like about 0.65 seconds, now watch. When I cut the selection, it applies a fade to the front and back of that. You can see it. Now listen. Hear that? It fades in and out. Now that's really awesome. Just to give you a, a like a radical example, I will pull this up to like one second. And uh, now listen. So Dika Sia, when um, when you have this ability to do fades like this. Um, fading in and out volume or you know fading vertically on the spectrum you can really shape your samples that way and um, it's um, I don't know it's beautiful this is just a great feature it's a great feature okay I'm glad I could answer that question for you thanks and um, keep asking those questions if I can answer them I will and if I can't why I'll just find the answer for you from someone else and uh, get back to you. So um, again, now I'm selecting a frequency and playing it. And I'm selecting a frequency and playing it. You're welcome, Dikas. Now, what if I want to make more than one selection? Well, that's very possible. Now, if I go up here, I have replace selection selected. Now, when replace selection means that when I make a selection and I make another selection, the new selection replaces the old, which is great. But if I want to make non-contiguous selections on the spectral graph, all I have to do is go up here and select add to selection. Okay, now watch. Command D deselects the selection, takes me back to square one. Now I can select a selection and play it. And I can select another selection and look, they're both there. Okay. Nice. Isn't that cool? So again, I can page through all of my different selections. Um, and then if I do a command D on uh, any given place, then I can just clear this panel right out. OK. And. Lewis um, asks, what would be the practical purpose of the time and frequency fades? Um, if you're doing a sound design project and 
you want to um, mix a whole bunch of different samples together on layers, um, then this it's it's great to have those fades so that you don't have um, you know super abrupt ins and outs. You can create you know pulsation effects. Um, go over to the Steinberg uh, um, YouTube site later and search on a video um, from Spectral Layers Elements and I think we, I think it's called Unmixing a Sound in Spectral Layers Elements. Um, th there we take a sound and we take it apart into it and we do a bunch of different stuff to it and we use the time fades there on a lot of that work and you can really see what the effect is. It's um, it's just nice to have. It's a great feature. It helps you tailor the uh, I don't know the ballistics, the in the you know the intensity of the uh, of the rise and fall of these things. You can create really nice, for example, like pulsation effects by uh, by using by using frequency fades. So now we get to the part where we definitely we want to create a new layer. So and again, you know, thanks for your patience here because um, one of my decisions is to take it nice and easy here so that um, you're not like completely overwhelmed with information. Um, I plan on doing a lot of these hangouts and um, I just want to have fun and go slow. I don't want to go too fast and get too hyper on you. And so we're just going to take it nice and easy. Okay, so here I've made three, three selections. And again, I'm able to make these contiguous selections because I've selected add to selection up here. This helps me make uh, non-contiguous selections. And so, what does this sound like? Okay. All right. That sounds kind of interesting. Now, if I were a remix artist, you know, maybe I would say, okay, let's take this drum loop and, um, you know, hollow it out and cut these frequencies out and then you know we'll use it at the beginning of the track and then maybe eight measures in you know bang in with uh, the full spectrum track and so what i'm doing here is i'm sound designing this drum loop by you know by shaping the frequencies and um, i've selected three frequency bands and um, you know um, i can use these for my remix but I'm going to deselect these now and I'm going to do it like this instead. I'm going to select one band at a time. So I'm going to select the band with just the kicks and I'm going to go edit, cut to new layer. Now watch. Over here in the layers panel you can see the big room drum loop all alone all by itself. When I go cut to new layer Now, the kick drums, uh, the kick drum is on its own layer. Okay, see that? So what I'm doing here is I'm basically deconstructing this file. Um, I am... Um, deconstructing the file into individual component layers. Now watch, look. When I go back to my original source material, the kick drum has been completely cut out of it. Okay. If I want to hear the original um, combination of frequencies, then Simply just play both layers and you get right back to where you were. Okay, again, kicks alone. And everything but the kicks. Okay. And that's how we cut layers in Spectral Layers Pro. This is, you know, the essence of the program. Uh, taking a sound and um, chopping it up into layers. So now, let's take another layer and uh, let's make another layer. So this is my original content minus the kick drum. And what I'm going to do is 
click on this layer and make it the active layer. Now this is really important. Um, and this is something that still, I've been using spectral layers for a long time, and this is something that still trips me up and like I laugh at myself every time because it's like it's so dumb. But um, I don't know, it's a bad habit of mine. Before you make a selection to cut to a new layer, you have to make this layer the active layer. Okay, just because you can see it in the spectrum doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be able to grab a tool and cut it out because it's not the active layer. Don't be fooled. So you've got to be very careful to make sure that the layer that you're cutting from is the active layer. And this is the original source file minus the kick drum. I'm going to solo it. Now I'm going to make sure this is the active layer and I'm going to pull another frequency and then I'm going to cut that to a new layer. Okay, now I have three layers. I've got the original kicks. I've got this layer. And I've got the rest of it. Okay. So now I have this drum loop split into three discrete components. Now, you can use your imagination and ask yourself, now, what can I do with this? You can do literally anything with this. You can take any of these layers and process them in other audio editors, like, for example, WaveLab. I can take the kick drum over to... Wave Lab from inside of spectral layers and do things like add more compression, uh, distortion, uh, different EQ. I can take any one of these layers and move it anywhere in the DAW ecosystem, DAW timeline, um, if, you know, freestanding audio editor. It basically just, you know, explodes the sound into different parts so that. Um, you can have access to these sounds for sound shaping. And um, in future Hangouts, um, I'll show you how to do that. Like, for example, take this kick drum sound over to um, Cubase for, or over to WaveLab for processing. And, uh, and so, yeah, that's just the, this is the tip of the iceberg. And so, um, so far, what I've showed you is how to um, take a drum loop, cut it up into layers based on frequencies, and then we can solo these layers and uh, remix. For example, um, if I want to pull this down a little bit, bring this up. Oh, that's the kick. It is, isn't it? Yep. But I'm sure you can see the possibilities there. And um, good. And uh, so I, I'm glad that uh, I had a chance to show you this. So um, that's it for the drum file for a little while. And uh, let's try a different, uh, let's try operating on a different file. And uh, so now. Watch this. I am going to go File, Open, and I'm going to open a WAV file, and this file is called Static Rhythm. Okay, now look up here on the, uh, the uh, GUI. Now we have two tabs the Big Room Drums and the static rhythm file that I just opened. Look, they're both available there, and so anytime I want to bounce back to this drum project, I can, but uh, right now we are working on this electronica loop called static rhythm. Now, this sound file, static rhythm, this is by um, in, uh, an Italian electronica producer called Leo Cavallo, and uh, it's a he's a, a really, really good producer, and uh, this this sample's a few years old. It was back when um, when glitch electronica was like super hot, and so he was making a lot of glitch music. And he came up with this file, 
Now, before I play it, I'm going to make it into a color that uh, I want to look at for a while. I don't. The green is not my favorite color, and so we'll try this color for a while. Let's listen. <laughs> I've got to laugh because um, this file, it looks like, like a strand of DNA. Um, and so it's, it's kind of funny that way. Um, Chakras has come up with a question. How to remove only one kick? Well, I'm going to show you. I will show you in the context of this file how to remove a sound, how to remove one sound. Um, and so you could generalize that out to, um, to a kick drum. Now, again, here we have our waveform display, and I don't have a use for that right now, so I'm going to uh, kind of unsee it. Now, again, um, talking about matching what you see with what you hear, listen to these four beeps. Beep. Beep. Okay. These are the four beeps. Now we want to get rid of these. And um, Chakras, pay attention here because you can do this process to a kick drum um, just as easily as um, I'm doing this here to these beeping sounds. Now what I'm going to do is I'm hovering my uh, cursor over the first beep and I'm using my scroll wheel to um, stretch out my timeline a little bit. Now I'm going to hover over the frequencies here and I'm going to expand this a little bit. Now you know what I'm going to do next. If you've been watching this, I'm going to go to view and I'm going to lock my spectrogram to zero so that I'm always looking at zero. Then I'm going to very quickly uh, dial in some focus. And so you can see I'm doing this a little bit faster this time because I've already showed you these things once. Um, you know, I'm taking it nice and slow today. I really I don't want to give you the idea that working with this program is slow. On the contrary, I mean, you can just, you know, you can just blast through projects on this. But I'm taking it nice and slow today so that um, uh, you can get, you know, saturated with this stuff and not overwhelmed. Now, um, we've used the uh, time and frequency selection tools, and now we're going to use the magic wand tool. Now, the magic wand tool kind of intelligently uh, seeks over the objects in the spectral graph. And we focused in on this object, and so um, I hope you can see the the selection bars here in um, after this video has been transcoded up to YouTube and stuff this is a little bit uh, a little bit dim I hope you can see it clearly but now when I hover over a part of the sound that I want to um, select then I just click it now I've selected that sound but I want more I want to grab this entire like square object so you know what I'm going to do, right? You guessed it. I'm going up here, and I'm going to do Add to Selection. Now, when I do Add to Selection and click, it expands my current selection until I have the entire object selected. Scroll wheel, zoom out, frequency scroll, and now you can see my object. Okay, that's my object. Now, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is just go through here and I'm going to grab all four of these. Um, segments. Okay, now listen. One two, three, and four. We got it. Um, 
this is a really good time for me to take a minute to explain something. Um, as you can see, I had to take my magic wand tool and I had to select every one of these four objects separately. Now, you might ask yourself, uh, is there a way that I can identify one of these sounds with my magic wand tool and then have Spectral Layers Pro select them all? And the answer to that question is, wait and see. Uh, keep your eyes on um, the Steinberg calendar and watch for the release of Spectral Layers Pro 7. Spectral Layers Pro 7 is going to have some uh, extremely intelligent features. And, um, you know, by the time Spectral Layers Pro 7 comes out, this poor old YouTube Hangout will be kind of obsolete, I guess. But uh, that's progress because uh, artificial intelligence happens faster than uh, history can even keep up with it. Excuse me, that wasn't welcome. So now, watch. I'm going to hit the space bar and you're going to hear all four of those objects uh, in play. Look at that. Plays all four. So you might guess what we're going to do next. We are going to cut to new layer. So I cut to new layer, and these sounds come up over here on their very own layer. One, two, three, and four. The original source material. You can see that um, the, the beeping sounds are now cut out of the original source. Listen, they're gone. And w when I say they're gone, I mean like they're really gone. You might hear a couple of little, you know, ghost echo notes or little transients or, you know, things here and there. But, you know, you can go and dig those out too. But when we cut something out of a spectrum, it's cut out. And um, this is one of the most extraordinary things that um, Spectral Layers Pro can do and elements, you know, to an extent as well. Taking sounds out of a layer and putting the sounds on their own layer or just getting rid of them completely. But now, here we are with this sound completely isolated. And again, let's listen to both together. Now, I'm going to change the color of... Uh, these two things and make them really contrasty. Now look, you can see the, look, even up here in the waveform you can see that the uh, the extracted sound has taken on um, the color that I've described for it here in the layers panel. So here, look. Check it out. That's really beautiful. So, Chakras, you know, if you can see a sound in a spectrum, like a kick drum or anything, um, you can reach in there and you can pull that. Uh, you can pull that sound out. Yes, indeed. Um, Nicolay, is it possible to remove the reflection of the speech in uh, Garage? The reverberation is huge. Yes. Um, Spectral Layers Pro uh, has a reverb removal process, and um, uh, I don't really have time to get into that here today, but thanks for the question, and um, I will make sure to put that on the list for um, a future Hangout to, uh, to um, demonstrate that. You're welcome, Chakras. So yes, you can remove reverbs and uh, you know delays to an extent. Uh, there's a number of ways that you can do that. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Bruno asks, what about when sound hues reverb or delay? Yes, you can, you can remove uh, the reverb and delay, but one of the coolest things here, and I'll show you this in a future Hangout, is that what if you want to add reverb? Now, now that I have this sound, um, listen. Now that I have this sound isolated, what if I want to add reverb to that? I can do that in a number of different ways. And uh, in again, in future Hangouts, um, we'll look at program interoperability and how to um, move stuff around from program to program. Um, yeah, I'll be honest with you. I have to sort through a couple of issues first because, you know, I'm using this um, MacBook Pro as a broadcast platform, and it works pretty good with um, Spectra layers. But then if you want to add a whole bunch of different programs and if you want, if you want to have material jumping back and forth from program to program, I'm not really sure how well my broadcast software in the background, that I believe it's called OBL, is that what it's called? OBS, yeah. OBS, I'm sorry, I said OBL, that was wrong. I'm not really sure how, you know, um, I just have to be really careful because when you start when you start moving stuff from program to program, um, you have bit depth issues and, and sample rate issues. It gets really strange. So, um, but yes, in the future, definitely, I will definitely um, show you how to move this stuff around from program to program. How to get it to display in that DNA format. Yeah, we can go back and look at that a little bit. Like I said, it looks like a piece of DNA. And um, let's just start over. I mean, like I can close out of both of these. Now we're closed out. And uh, I can open static rhythm again. Now, this is the default view when you open the file. It looks pretty good, right? But if you really want to focus in, you can use these threshold controls here like this. And uh, again, you know, you just keep playing with them until, you know, you get the kind of focus uh, that you need. And then at the end, if you want to, you can dial in that refinement and that really sharpens the works up. Uh, again, let's take a look at that refinement control. I'm going to view frequency unit lock spectrogram to zero. So now we're we're anchored. Let's call it we're anchored here at the bottom. And look, I'm growing this thing up. And uh, this is one of those beeps. Beep. So there it is. Now the refinement control really zeroes in and um, And this is your DNA. This is the DNA of Electronica. And uh, there's all different kinds of sounds here that you can explore. We can go over to a different uh, color scheme, kind of a dynamic uh, color scheme. And um, this is the kick drum. The kick drum in the, in the Electronica loop looks a lot different than the kick drum in the Steve Ferroni loop. What does it sound like? Boom. So uh, let's try pulling that out. We can pull out one kick drum. And which tool should I use to do this? Well, I don't know. Let's try. We can use the, the magic wand tool again. And uh, may not be the exact best tool to use, but uh, let's see here. I'm kind of fixated on that right now. So I'm going to go make sure I have my add to selection tool picked and then I'm just gonna go in there and like select all the bits of this kick drum sound and whoop deselect that selection yeah again I'm not really sure how much detail that you're missing uh, because of the the, the transcoding but when I hover my when I hover my tool over the over the uh, amplitude, the light, then I can sort of see uh, what I'm going to get if I decide to select it. So, so there's a kick. What does that sound like? Ooh, not bad. Look, it looks like I um, 
I, I've got part of the transient of that kick. I don't know if that was skill or luck, but uh, <coughs> I'm just going to roll with that. Excuse me for a moment. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, and so now we have this selected. And look, I'm going to go cut to new layer. And I'm going to have a drink of water. And that was good. So now, when I solo this kick drum, here it is. Here it is. Wow. Now, I have that kick drum completely isolated. And look, it's gone. It's gone from the, the original layer. It, like, there's, there, it looks like there's still like little pieces, pieces of it left. But... Um, <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me again, but I can always go in there and um, you know s and select it out and take it back out to the uh, to my selection. And so we worked on that for a little while. Let's do one more quick thing. Um, now, you know, spectral layers, when, when people think of spectral layers, they think repair and restore. Um, you know, it's for fixing stuff or doing, you know, your typical, you know, repair and restore activities, noise reduction and, and st stuff like that. Um, all the stuff that I've showed you today is really not repair and restore, you know. <coughs> Excuse me. It's more um, sound design. Yes, I must say this. I have a little frog in my throat here from the spring allergies that are just so intense this year. But uh, we can very quickly go through uh, one more little example before we wrap this hang up, hang out up. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, okay, let, let's, let's do some repair stuff. So listen to this. Audio Technica 4033. Plosive speech sounds. The basic plosives in English are T, K, and P. D, G, and B. Okay, so I made this uh, file. This is a straight-up recording of a, a 4033 with no processing on it. And... Um, uh, I was using, you know, really close proximity, and um, I picked up some plosives. Let's look at them and try to get control over them. And, you know, again, with, uh, with this Hangout, one of the things that was important for me to communicate to you was how to locate these sounds. And again, I showed you that um, using your scroll wheel, you know, extends your timeline here, and... Um, balancing over the frequency range expands you know upward so that you can drill into specific frequencies um, I like in a lot of cases to stay anchored at zero Hertz so I go frequency unit lock spectrogram to zero and then why I can just hover over the uh, frequency range and uh, dial in then, uh, you know, we do a little bit of focus with our amplitude thresholds and um, the resolution. And I dial in a little bit of my secret sauce here that I like, the refinement. And uh, then we pull a selection. And I, I believe that I am I have a plosive on hand right here. Plosives. Yeah, plosive speech sounds. Plosive speech. Okay, so obviously, you know, look, this is zero hertz down at the bottom of the spectrum. That is zero hertz. And look how much signal we have here at zero. I mean, like, this is this is the essence, you know, of plosive. You're having a um, an amplitude spike or whatever at a frequency range that is basically, I don't know, it's useless. Um, here in my waveform display, 
you can see that the uh, the plosive sound is coming in at about minus six, somewhere between minus six and minus nine dB. Um, you know, it's worthless and it's loud, and so we want to attenuate that. And so here's how we'll do it. Get focused in. We already are. Now I'm going to grab the eraser tool. Now the eraser tool comes up as a circle. And you can change the shape of that circle as well as the size of it here. So right now the circle is 99 pixels. At 184 pixels it's getting, you know, pretty big. So let's dial down the size of that brush a little bit. And uh, the aspect ratio um, sort of like describes the difference between a, a perfect circle and an oval shape. And so there we have a nice oval shape. Um, the hardness is, um, is almost like it's almost like a fade on the tool. It, it describes how hard that um, it's going to hit. It's going to press in the center of the tool. And then, <coughs> excuse me. As you get out to the edge of the tool, it kind of softens up a little bit. And attenuation, of course, is by decibel, and it's the amount of um, reduction in sound. Okay, now, before I do this operation, I want to explain one quick thing to you. Look, if I change the size of the spectrum, if I, if I bring this plosive up so that it fills the whole screen, now... Plosive. This is the plosive right here. But look, even though I expand the size of the spectrum um, high and wide, the size of my tool stays the same. It stays the same. So if I wanted to get rid of the plosive on a spectrum of this size, I would have to, you know, make the tool um, really big. But this is interesting because... You know, the size of your tool is, it's a relative thing. If I'm using, if, if I make my, uh, if I make my spectrum view, like, smaller, the size of the tool stays the same, and I don't have to change it. And so, you can sort of, like, you know, jump back and forth between, between brush size and, um, the size of the spectrum, and, uh, to arrive at the uh, the tool size that you need. Okay, so now I'm ready to attenuate. All I do is I balance my tool over the plosive and draw over the top. There, I've attenuated it by uh, 7 dB. Plosive, plosive. Okay, let's see what that sounds like uh, before and after. Plosive. There's before and I'll just do it again for the after. This time I'll I'll do two passes. Plosive speed. Okay, so we've taken care of that plosive, and um, that's how we do plosive control in Spectral Layers Pro. Now you might be saying, "Hey, wow, you know that's uh, that looks like a lot of hassle." Well, it's not. It's re it really isn't. I mean, um, once you get good at this and quick at it. Like, uh, let's say we'll big up this sound file a little bit, change it to a color that I like, and then uh, let's go through the whole file. Plosive speech sounds. The basic plosive... Okay, there's a big one. All I have to do is just hit it with my uh, eraser tool. Plosive speech sounds. The basic plosives in English fixed. are T, K, and P. Ooh, that's a big one. So here I'm just going to, like, I'll widen up my spectrum a little bit so I don't have to change my tool size. And um, I'll just go in there and wipe that out. And away it goes. That's all there is to it. And P. Good, done. And so that's plosive control. And, uh, good, yeah. That's how we do it. We, so we did three things today. We, uh... Took apart a drum loop, and then we uh, we took some stuff out of that electronica loop, and finally we worked on some plosives. 
Um, the main things to consider here are it's really easy to identify things in the spectrum and focus in on them and um, anchor your spectral view down and use your scroll wheel in the graph and over the frequencies um, to dial in on your sound, grab a tool, configure it, um, do your fades, cut to new layers, and um, you are on your way. Um, and I will say again, if uh, if you're an audio you know, person, a music producer, anything, whatever you do, if you have a problem that you can fix in Spectral Layers Pro, the second you do that, when you're finished fixing that problem, you are hooked. And um, you realize that um, after you understand what this program can do for you, then you realize, hey, you know, this is a program that I can't live without. Um, I have salvaged so many files with this program, and you will be convinced after your first successful salvage job that um, Spectral Layers is definitely uh, something that you want to have in your toolbox at all times. So, uh, yeah, again, now... Uh, my name is Mike Scheibinger, and I have broadcasted this from Madison, Wisconsin at Arts for All. And Arts for All is um, a place that uh, helps um, people with disabilities enjoy uh, dance, drama, creative writing, music, and visual art. I'm a teacher here, and I teach disabled people how to uh, play music and enjoy music, and it's a lot of fun. And um, thanks to Arts for All for uh, letting me use this space to broadcast here today. So um, I will hang out here for another couple of minutes while you guys um, <clears throat> check in with your final comments. And again, I'm looking for uh, best days, best times for hangouts. Uh, I see that somebody mentioned that um, weekends is a good time. I'm available on weekends. Sure, I'll come in and do a hangout uh, any weekend that you want. And also, you know, bring in uh, your feature requests. Type in your feature requests. And um, I've given you a little bit of a sneak preview today about some of the things that you might see in Spectral Layers Pro 7. Um, Spectral Layers Pro 7 is going to be... Um, well, in my opinion, I think it's going to be the most significant update in uh, the last seven years. And so you definitely want to, to keep an eye out for that. Also, um, some of the questions that you had today can be answered by going over to um, Steinberg's um, YouTube channel and checking out the new videos. Uh, I made some new tutorials for Spectral Layers Elements. And um, one of them is about unmixing. And it addresses questions about uh, what is the value of uh, fade curves. And um, it also contrasts the difference between um, the way I did the demo in Spectral Layers Elements as opposed to the way I did it in Spectral Layers Pro 6. In Pro 6, I used the, the Magic Wand tool, which does not exist in um, Spectral Layers Elements. Uh, Spectral Layers Pro has um, significantly more functionality than Elements. They're both great. Um, and for stuff like Erase and Plosives, why, you know, Elements does just as good of a job as Pro. So um, if getting rid of Plosives is your thing, then, uh, you know, get it. And then get, get Pro later when uh, you have a need for it. In my experience using Spectral Layers, I will say this. Um, I use it all the time, and I record a lot of clients in my recording studio who play acoustic guitar, and uh, they do, you know, like folk music and Americana and stuff like that. And um, for getting rid, of, getting rid of little extraneous sounds like acoustic guitar string squeaks and stuff like that, you just can't, you can't beat this program. It's, there's nothing else like it on earth that can, that can do this. Nothing. Um, it's that, it's astonishing. And, uh, I have a tutorial over on the Steinberg YouTube channel where I, um, I fixed some stuff in a 
in a, on an acoustic guitar track, um, some string squeaks, check that out because, I mean, that's a lifesaver. A lot of times you'll have a really perfect track except for some, you know, annoying, unwanted sound. And um, if you can get rid of that, it makes you so happy. It makes a client happy. And um, it's really easy to do, as you can see today, that, you know, watch a few tutorials like this and you're well on your way. Okay, Hans says thanks. Thank you, Hans. I'm really glad you checked in. Stanley, good to see you here today. Level 6. Um, upgrade grace period. Yeah, I'm not really sure about that, what the terms are on that yet. Um, make sure to get in touch with uh, with Steinberg uh, customer support and find out about that. Uh, DD Jack 59 has Cubase and Spectre layers. That's great. Hope you're enjoying that. Dekus uh, is realizing that things are possible. Fairy Audio, Mix File, yup, yup. It's not better to use waveform at the top. Well, actually, you know, this is, um, it's your choice. I mean, you can make the selection on the spectral graph. You can make the selection in the waveform. The choice is yours. Um, but I will say this, in a lot of cases, the graph is the only way that you're going to be able to make a certain selection because you can't see the object in the waveform. You can see an amplitude spike, but, I mean, that's the whole works. You know, you can't really get in there and see the object. And uh, one of the big points of Spectral Layers Pro and Elements is that you can actually isolate these objects. And we did a lot of that today. I tried to explain, um, you know, how to make the cognitive, the mental connection between what you hear and what you see. Um, it's really easy. Uh, and, you know, w when I say it takes practice, yeah, sure, but it, it takes a little bit of practice. It's not like um, there's a huge learning curve here. Um, Spectral Layers actually doesn't really have a really huge learning curve. The thing is, though, is that it's like, it's strange. That's the only thing about it. I mean, once you learn it, it's like, oh, that's easy. And there's nothing really hidden from you. And there's no, like, um, you know, hidden traps or whatever. Or, you know, like when you're using an NLE, like a lot of times it's like, oh, you know, something weird happens and you don't know why. And it's, Spectral Layers is not like that. It's, it's um, the learning curve is short. What you see is what you get. And um, it's pretty, pretty easy to use. Dirk, um, you would like to see some information about what Spectral Layers is for. I would suggest going over to the Steinberg uh, YouTube channel and just start looking at tutorials um there's you know there's something for everyone there and um there will be more in the future i promise you yeah there will be and very good okay um my own social media info um you can um, you can friend me up at uh, Virtu Studio V E R T U S T U D I O over on uh, Facebook Virtu Studio. That's my little home studio, my basement um, studio. And so that is a wrap. And um, thanks for checking in. I'm uh, really happy to see you all here today from all over the world, answering your questions, trying to help. And um, I would like to thank, again, Arts for All for giving me the space to do this broadcast. And I'd like to thank Steinberg for giving me the opportunity to do this. And um, please be well out there. Stay safe. I know times are difficult, but uh, everything's going to get better. And... Um, um, I'm just wishing you the best of luck, and we'll see you next time, okay? All right, then. Signing off. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.